Hello everyone, this is Jeff of Tau Flatter Mouse. Today we have an ultra light projectile made out of aluminum. You will recognize this shape as kind of the classic Diabolo shape used in air rifle pellets. And what I did, I sent a lineman slug, which is made out of lead in his cast, to Tim from Tactical G Code so he could backwards engineer this exact slug but make them out of different metals. Now the idea is to see how an ultra lightweight projectile behaves in a supersonic environment. These two slugs are for the most part identical but of course they differ in hardness and definitely in weight. The lead Lyman slug weighs in at about 31 grams which is just a little over one ounce and just to give you some kind of comparison that equals the weight of 13 pennies. Now on the other hand this aluminum slug weighs in at only seven grams and that equals the weight of only three pennies. That's about four and a half times lighter than the lead slug. Now these are designed to fit inside the shot cup so the shot cup kinda acts like a sabo. The slug never contacts the barrel directly and the dimensions are are just right so that it squeezes through the rifling of this choke tube or through the rifling of a normal fully rifled barrel. And for all our tests today we'll be using just some federal multi-purpose load or target shells. Okay we've got the first aluminum slug. They're supposed to be very accurate. Um, How does it feel? Extremely light. Yeah I noticed it almost felt like a, an empty shell you'd find on the ground. Very very light. On my Facebook page I asked people what do you want us to shoot these at? And we got a lot of replies back, so I'm going to try to do as many as possible. We're starting off with the ballistic gummy bears. Now, it's important to know that when we get these projectiles from Tim, we just get a limited quantity. Sometimes we just get two of them, maybe three, but this time we got six of them. Still, we don't take any practice shots, so when Darren went and shot this thing, this was the first time he ever shot this projectile, but he was still able to manage to hit the gummy bears in the arm, which is really the thicker part of the gummy bear. That's crazy. How did we not lose that? How did we not lose that? Now, normally if we shot these gummy bears with a lead slug, they would go through all six of them without a problem. This projectile only went through two gummy bears. It hit the third one, kind of scuffed its arm a little bit, and then it bounced and landed on the table. These gummy bears are made out of a kind of a synthetic rubber, not gelatin. And this is the slug that we found just sitting on the table after we shot it. Kevin from the Backyard Scientist channel wanted us to shoot a balloon full of oobleck. I forgot to bring that, but we had this five pound thing of uh, silly putty to shoot. Now, a few months ago we shot this five pound block of silly putty with a 22 long rifle bullet and that bullet just went right through this without really slowing down. But of course these 70 caliber pellets, having a big flat nose and everything, they don't slip through the silly putty quite so easily. A lot of people ask, where do you get five pounds of silly putty at? Well the parent company is Crayola and you can go to their website and buy a bulk thing of Silly Putty for about 70 or 80 dollars I believe. Now we thought that the pellet was lost but it was actually trapped inside the Silly Putty. It went in about maybe three or four inches before it stopped. And as you can see it's in perfect condition too. Not bent, scratched or anything. Now we wanted to shoot the so-called homemade bulletproof glass that the channel AVE sent us one more time. We doubled up on the layers of the glass that he sent us. So let's see how that works. Now look how well this slug flies through the air. Just very straight and true. And I suspect that 
Darren was just human in, on this shot. It was a, a kind of a smaller target this time. But interesting, he, you know, he still hit the glass and the brass at the same time. And watch this weird effect when the aluminum smacks against the brass. Actually made a little flash. I don't know if the aluminum was detonating or the brass was detonating, but it was a pretty neat little flash, and you can only see it on that one camera off, shot. But where'd the round go? Yeah, there's no telling. I think it it broke up. But he glanced it here. There's Ooh. the back. Maybe we saw glass flying. Yeah. Never mind. Multi layers there. Wow, you can see a ton of them. Just all yeah, so that, that's, that was kind of a good good test still. Yeah, because it, it's it, not very bulletproof, is it? <laughs> no. It's that, that's more like a hammer hitting it and the back of the glass. Yeah. Out, right? Wow. Jay Brown that's wanted good. us to shoot at a block of lead. He wanted really thick, like two or three inches, and that's pretty optimistic. Our block of lead here is only about an inch thick and it weighs about 10 pounds. By now, Darren has finally figured out where these things are, sh are shooting. And you can see that, again, the flight of it is very straight and true and stable. And he just connected right in the center of that plate. Once again, you'll see a weird little flash when the slug contacts the lead plate. Okay, I, I think you missed, Darren. I think I did, too. Let's I think see. the box moved it. Yeah. Oh. Well, that's weird. Look at that. Darren can aim. <laughs> You can't really get much more dead center than that. I, we can't find that slug, but you can see by the indentation, it really mushroomed out a lot. It only, it didn't not go very in. deep, not no. very deep. As I was saying, it didn't go in very deep at all. The slug is, it, it, we might find it later on. Okay, block of clay, everyone's favorite. A real crowd pleaser. Yes, indeed. destroyed. Now clay is an interesting material to shoot. It acts more like a liquid than a solid and it creates a big cavity from the uh, hydroshock. Now of course ballistic gel will also do that but it'll stretch back. This is neat because it leaves a a permanent cavity that you can kind of look at and get an appreciation of how much energy transfer there was. Yeah. That's crazy. Can you move can you rotate it into the sunlight a little bit? Yep. There we go. It's in a big shadow right now. There we go. Look at this that's, cavity. That's that, my hand. That's that's crazy, Darren. And you can actually see the e exit wound there. Yeah, actually this is where the is that, bullet left. Yeah. This last piece right here. Yeah. Which then, if you look at the box behind you, you and it's in the box, so it's yeah, right here, the, the, barely the, the sand. I can feel it. The clay doesn't stop bullets very good, no. but it makes excellent cavitations. It was at five out of six. We only we lost one. We lost two, because one shattered. I think. Oh, the lead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I lost two. Look at that. There's nothing wrong with that. Nope. We oh we got to shoot it out of the the smooth bore. Ah. Okay, now we're gonna switch to a smooth bore and see how these fly. And our target for today is, it's a basketball. We're like one of those wannabe dude perfect channels, you know? Hopefully his aim will be good. Aluminium. No practice shots. That's the, we're honest about that, you know? No practice shots. Yep. Kapuya! <laughs> I almost, forgot about shooting these out of a smooth bore, but it's very important to see how stable these things fly without relying on spin stabilization and just using the aerodynamics of the slug itself, its careful balance and drag and all that. Now the shot is a, a few inches high, but fortunately it went right through the basketball and was trapped in our box of sand. And I'm sure with a few shots using this shotgun, Darren would have been able to finally figure out where it was shooting.
but the, you can see the slug it was wobbling around a little bit it was kind of hunting around but for the most part it flew pretty straight not as straight as with rifling though without the spin stabilization the slug is relying on the drag from the skirt and the nose heaviness of it just to fly straight through the air now we've seen that same kind of gyration or wobbling effect on other successful projectiles even factory ones so it seems to be just uh, the nature of an unspun projectile being so light these things had very very little energy so they did very little damage to the objects that we shot them at but the performance of them was quite good the accuracy the stability and flight and everything was, was very good now one thing we wanted to find out was just how fast these things were traveling so we shot both the lead slug and the aluminum slug that was right dead center Yeah. now these two slugs were fired out of identical shells so they had the same energy and I'm honest enough with myself to you know tell you that I thought the aluminum slug would go a lot faster equal energy but four and a half times lighter than the lead slug I thought it would go you know 50% faster if not much faster so I synced up the two shots from the lead slug and the aluminum slug and much to my surprise they flew at nearly identical speeds now one thing I am very certain about is if we shot these at a hundred yards the velocity of the aluminum slug would have bled off quite quickly so how fast were these going roughly 1250 feet per second okay we dumped the sand out of the box this is of course is our lead slug you can see it, it just there's a nitro car inside of it very mushroomed out there's our aluminum slug brand new can totally reshoot that no issues and I'll leave you with this. This is a test shot for a future video. Just a little sneak preview. Very, very weird one. But um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And we'll stick around and check out this video when we finally release it. Thanks again for watching.